What's going on everybody? It's Ollie from Flight Comp and we're going to take a quick look at the new Infinity uh, short nose uh, V-tail fuselage. I have one right here and then I have the uh, standard or the old style uh, Infinity fuselage right here which oddly was short is shorter than the original original Infinity fuselage which I don't have but you can see if I line up the um, alignment pins back here you can see that the short nose fuselage is about maybe two and a half or three inches shorter than the standard fuselage the canopy is uh, further back and the uh, distance between the leading edge of the wing and the back of the canopy is shorter you can see this guy versus this guy here so let's look inside and see how the gear lays out. Um, I put this one together for a uh, friend of mine. Take some of the stuff out of here. So um, they're providing you with a really nice uh, new sort of machined carbon fiber servo tray, which you have to glue in. That's this guy right here. Uh, fits the uh, MKS 6100 size or Bluebird. Uh, 105, 125 size servo perfectly. And then we have our push rods back here. Uh, I do have a, uh, a motor installed and a um, 60 amp speed control. Now the motor goes back to here and with this bigger 60 amp speed control, it kinda, this all kind of takes up a lot of space which leaves a little, not much room up here for a, the battery but I did manage to squeeze his uh, Turner G uh, 850 3S pack in, which goes right here. We're we'll putting the uh, receiver and uh, Altus behind the servos. So the, the theory behind the short nose is that uh, it'll help you with your CG. And on this particular model, um, this is the uh, fuselage from his um, Infinity Performance. It's X-Tail. So Basically, we're just going to be uh, putting a new V-tail fuselage on it and seeing how it flies. But with this guy, we actually had to put about uh, 20 grams of lead in the tail to get the CG around 118. And since this is a uh, performance wing, uh, we're using a little heavier motor and you know the, the bigger speed control. So we have about a 110 gram motor, 60 amp speed control. And I did a quick uh, CG test with all this, and um, it's definitely um, not nose heavy anymore. I actually have to add, you know, maybe like 10 grams of lead in the nose to get this to CG at 118. But better to have the weight here than all the way um, back at the tail. So I think this short nose actually will help you get, uh, you know, uh, your CG closer and e easier without uh, putting weight in the tail or, or moving things around really funny. So the install is really straightforward. Again, this is a V-tail. Um, one thing to note is that the uh, control horns back here on the V-tail are pretty short. So I used really small or really short servo arms, so you can see there. And I used clevises and couplers to attach to the push rods and I've you know, ground down the clevises to get clearance um, when the servo moves to get a good range of motion. This way I'm using the majority of the servo travel um, you know, through the whole range of motion of the V-tails. You could use a bigger arm but they're not going to move that much and you'll get a lot of deflection at the tail. So I recommend you use very short uh, servo arms. Okay, so that's all kind of standard stuff. The really neat feature of this airplane are the V-tails, so let's take a look at those. I love V-tail models. I think they uh, look better than X-tails, and in some cases i found they, they can fly better. Um, of course, it's personal taste. You know, they're a little harder to set up and get flying right. But one of the biggest drawbacks of a V-tail model is that the V-tails generally are really difficult to put on and off. Um, so whenever I've had a V-tail model, I've just found myself leaving the V-tails on and never, you know, removing them for transport, which can, you know, uh, limit the space in your car, 
and it can lead to damaging the V-tails because you know they're out and on the airplane and exposed. Um, so I think this airplane really addresses that, and this is one of the neatest setups I've I've ever seen for a V-tail, and it makes you know putting the V-tails on and taking them off really easy. So we have a machined uh, control horn that's pre-installed on the the tail, and it's got a hole in it. And then we have, um, instead of like the conventional, you know, tail cone cover that would go on here, that would hide all this linkage, um, there's just basically an indent, and this is all molded one piece. And there's sort of a, a bulkhead here, and that's where the pushrod exits, and it sort of captures the pushrod so it can't move around too much. And then at the front of the fuselage, they actually supply you with like a Z-Bend coupler, but again, um, using the really small horns, it wouldn't, wouldn't be practical, so you'd want to go with a clevis or a ball link. And after you get everything, you know, trimmed up and centered, if you just put a, a little drop of CA on the threads to fix the clevis, that ends up allowing the push rods back here to basically hold their angles so all you have to do to remove this guy is just pull it off like that and it just slides off the uh, L bend there so now this guy really isn't gonna rotate right it's gonna basically stay fixed in this position since we have uh, a little bit of CA at the clevis keeping it from uh, rotating Right? So that's basically going to stay there. And now you have your fuselage free of the tails um, to, to transport it and put it in the uh, um, protective cover if you have one of those. And then this is what the uh, back of the V-tail fuselage looks like. The nice thing about this is that I'm gonna try to put my hand behind here you can see the shape better this pointy bit back here is filled with a uh, row cell and it kind of has a you know the row cell like, actually extends uh, further into the fuselage this is super strong right here I mean you're not gonna snap this off a lot of times on normal V-tail fuselage, you have that really flimsy cone and just a real thin like uh, tab right here, and it's really easy just to snap off if you bump it onto something. But this is extremely strong, and again, we have the push rods here kind of fixed in position. So to put the V-tails back on, it, it's just it's much the same thing. You just slide them down, sort of get them aligned, and then basically you just push it into place like this, and just get your finger and kind of pop that in, and just push it down and that's it. Now once that's in place, and you put some tape on to fix the V-tail to the fuselage, there's no way this is coming off the horn because it can't really go anywhere because of the hole that's in the back of the fuselage. It limits where that push rod can actually go. So, like I said, this is just, you know, a really clean, easy V-tail to assemble, easy to build, you know, during the build process, and it's, it's going to be really pain-free when you um, transport it. So if you're a fan of V-Tails and you've been looking at the Infinity, man, I, I really give this a thumbs up. You know, it's just super clean way of doing the whole um, linkage for the V-Tail and making it easier to, to assemble and disassemble. The other thing I like about this is that the uh, moving surfaces are huge. So. I have a feeling this is going to be very responsive. You won't have to deflect the elevators uh, a whole lot to get a, a lot of uh, response out of the model. 
And you know, that coupled with the um, short nose, because basically from the the tip of the nose to the center of the gravi center gravity of the airplane, it, it's shorter now, so that's uh, less damping to counteract the um, inputs you put in your tail. So it, it should be much more responsive, have much crisper, um, more responsive elevator and rudder inputs. One thing I forgot to mention is that the kit supplies you with this really handy um, deflection gauge for the elevator. As you can see that right here. Since there's no um, index marks to actually center the uh, elevators or rudder raters, um, you can just use this um, deflection gauge here to set your zero. Here's a close look at it. There's this little um, sort of just plywood maybe um, brace piece that you have to glue in here um, just to keep it from falling over on the elevator. It's nice that they include this. A few tips, um, a few thing, little things that I did to make assembling the V-tails easier. Um, the first thing I did was I put a little chamfer or bevel around the uh, L-bend just to help it index and slide into the control horn on the tail easier. The next thing I did was the hole here in the bulkhead, I used a round file just like this one and opened it up um, basically in the up and down direction. I oiled it out, not this way, but up and down. And that basically allows the push rod, see, it allows it to move slightly in those directions. And that got me a lot more travel in the um, the rudder vaders because with the hole just as it was, since the distance from the bulkhead to the L bend is so short, you know the uh, the rudder vader is moving on an arc, so the horn is moving on an arc too. So this push rod needs to be able to move up and down with that arc without binding. And just standard the way it was, with the, the hole back here being so short, it would just jam up against the, the hole, and I wouldn't get a whole lot of travel out of the, uh, the rudder vaders. So again, I just opened it up with a file, you know, a few minutes of filing on it, and I got tons of throw out of the tails. And again, be careful just to open it up in the up and down direction, not this way, because you still want this thing to be retained. Um, you don't want to give this so much slop that it has a chance of uh, slipping out of the control horn. Really not that big of a deal, but definitely if you uh, want more travel, you can take a look at that. Um, anyway, that's uh, basically just a quick look at the Infinity uh, Short Nose V-Tail Fuselage. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We're going to go out and test this thing. Maybe we can actually test it back-to-back -back compared to the X-Tail. And hopefully we'll be able to do a... Uh, you know, a video of this thing flying and, and get some impressions and how the new VTail works. So anyway, thanks a lot guys and I'll see you in the next one.